There are plenty of notebooks out in the market today. You've got your netbooks, multimedia notebooks, gaming notebooks, and also business notebooks. These days, however, the buzz is all about ultrabooks. If you don't know what they are, then you're in luck, because today we're going to show you what ultrabooks are and what to consider when getting one. An ultrabook has got to have a thin body. As of Intel's specifications, it has to be under 20mm thick, which you can probably spot in this stellar lineup of the hottest ultrabooks you can get your hands on right now. In order to qualify to be called an ultrabook, it's got a weight below 1.4kg, which is a physical aspect that automatically falls in line with its thinness. Ultrabooks are engineered to have very long battery life coupled with reasonable performance. In order to do that, you need to consume less power, hence the low power mobile processors on the ultrabooks. They will often come with these processors, but you can also identify them by looking at the processor model number. If it ends with a 7M, it's most likely what you're looking for. These processors usually have a thermal design power of 17 watts compared to normal mobile chips at 35 watts. This low power consumption results in significant power savings, but the trade-off will be lower clock speeds. But these differences won't be noticeable to the average consumer when handling day-to-day -day tasks like surfing the web or watching videos. To illustrate this, we have battery life performance of two notebooks, the Sony Vio Z, which uses a Core i7-2620M processor, and the Toshiba Protégé Z830, which uses a Core i7-2677M processor. Both 13-inch machines feature similar specifications and similar battery capacities so that you can see the differences in power consumption. Some Ultrabooks will also try to give you bigger battery capacities, which should give you better battery life at the expense of weight. Flash-based solid-state drives are important because they not only give you a performance boost when doing daily tasks, but they also enable your computer to instantly resume from sleep mode so you don't have to shut the machine down when travelling around. It also boosts startup time so that if you do shut down your machines, it only takes about 20 seconds or less. So those are some of the key requirements that make up an Ultrabook, but there are also other manufacturers out there with different designs. So here are some of the design considerations to help you choose your next Ultrabook. Tracking is made easier and having a clickable trackpad makes it more convenient for navigation. The keyboard is a component that interacts the most with the user and a subpar keyboard would often flex under pressure. The material of the keyboard housing is also very important. Some are made of plastic and some are metal. The plastic ones usually introduce more flex while the metal alloy ones are sturdier. When it comes to ports, you will need to find a notebook that fits your requirements. Keep a lookout for USB 3.0 ports that allow you to attach the latest USB 3.0 devices. Most Ultrabooks will come with HDMI out options, but look out for VGA ports if you need to do presentations often and need to connect to older projectors and monitors. Finally, we have the security features, which are essential if you're using your Ultrabook in the enterprise environment. The most obvious one is the fingerprint reader, which you can see here. While the not-so-obvious security feature would be the trusted platform module chip that allows you to protect your information. So these are the essential features that you can look out for when you're getting yourself a new Ultrabook. For more information, log on to www.hardwarezone.com.sg